All right. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today on a very happy World Oceans Day. We at Ocean First Institute are so excited to be celebrating all right. with all of you, morning, whether you're everyone. in Boulder, Colorado, or out on the coast. Um, we're thrilled to have you join us today. We're going to begin our World Ocean Day celebration by being joined by our executive director, Dr. Mickey McComb Kobza, who is, among many things, a world-renowned shark expert and has had the opportunity to go scuba diving in some extraordinary and beautiful places all around the world, whether for research or recreation. And today, in celebration of World Oceans Day, she is going to guide us through a virtual scuba diving trip as we celebrate the amazing biodiversity of our ocean. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Mickey for her virtual World Oceans Day dive. All right, uh, well, thank you, Ayla, so much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, Happy World Oceans Day. This is so exciting. It's our favorite week of the year <laughs> to celebrate the ocean and everything in it and why it's so uh, critically important. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you. So bear with me for one second here. And then, Ayla, I'm going to ask you if you can see and hear me still. We certainly can. Perfect, I'm gonna get started. All right, well, welcome. It's World Oceans Day, and um, as many of you probably know, I am an avid scuba diver. Um, I have been a scuba diver since um, the 1980s. When I was uh, 16 years old, I became certified, and it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I love diving with friends, being underwater, having uh, the amazing opportunities that you have when you go diving. Um, you never know what you're going to see, and it really is the, the world's last great wilderness. And um, when you go diving, there is a camaraderie with your, uh, your, your co-fellow divers that is uh, it's truly magical. And it has been um, a common thread throughout my whole life, my research career. Um, everything I do, there is some element of diving in it. And uh, so today, in celebration of World Oceans Day, I'd like to share some of the fun um, dives and some of the most magical moments I've had in my life um, with you today. And I'm going to start uh, by talking about a, a trip that I did recently. Um, it was just in February of this past year. I had the opportunity to travel to Palau and Yap. Um, these are island nations in Micronesia, and they're renowned for their incredible topside and underwater beauty. And uh, Palau did not disappoint. Uh, probably one of the best dives of my life happened in a place in Palau called German Channel. Um, it was late, late afternoon, and all of us on the trip slipped into the waters of German Channel together. And within a few minutes, um, we were able to see these incredible manta rays, um, a group of about eight of them surrounding us, swimming through us. Um, as you may know, manta rays are filter feeding uh, animals, uh, and they were filter feeding right in front of us. Um, they have those large um, flaps in their heads. They're called cephalic lobes, and they're thought to help aid in feeding and maneuvering. And this particular manta kept coming in, and it was um, one of the most incredible experiences I've had. It was so close to me. Um, and it was a truly uh, profound experience to share space with an animal so big and uh, so majestic. During that same trip, I spent a lot of time underwater with sharks. This is a black tip reef shark, uh, and they uh, were surrounding us on most of our dives in Yap and uh, were common on the reefs that we were uh, diving on. And we were also doing a little bit of research um, during that trip. We were trying to measure some of the sharks. And so, again, we were seeing these uh, beautiful black tip reef sharks on most of the dives. Uh, I was able to do <laughs> some really fun um, night dives in Yap. And one of those was on a place called Rainbow Reef. And Rainbow Reef has resident mandarin fish. That's what you're seeing on the screen there, mandarin fish. And in this particular night, they were mating. And so we were able to watch these beautiful mandarin fish swimming around on the reef 
um, and you would see clouds of eggs and sperm um, and they were successfully mating. So it was an amazing um, evening to spend um, watching these beautiful fish um, darting in and out. Um, another thing that I was able to see during this dive trip that was, um, I don't even know how to describe it. I, in, uh, in graduate school, I studied vision in fish and sharks in particular. And um, as part of my research, I learned a lot about eyes in fish and their function. And um, one fish that I got to talk and, and learn a lot about was the crocodile fish. And um, I, I'm gonna use my cursor, hopefully you can see it, but this is the mouth of uh, the crocodile fish. These are the eyes. And then all the way back, you can see the tail and these are the, um, uh, the pectoral fins there. So uh, interesting fish. And uh, I never in my life thought that I would see this fish in real life. And when I did, I was, I sound silly, but I was overwhelmed that I was able to see this animal in, in real life. And this is a picture my dive buddy took, Tony Fernandez. Thank you, Tony, for that. And the reason these animals are so incredible is their eyes. So if you look at the eye of a crocodile fish, you're looking at this elaborate pupillary structure um, and they're called iris lapets. And they furl down to help um, that the eye control the amount of light coming in, which is critically important. But if you gaze into the eyes of these animals, it's just pure magic. It's absolutely uh, an incredible moment. And not only did I see one during that trip, I actually saw three. And uh, it, was a, it was a very, it sounds silly, but it was a profound moment for me to be able to share space with these animals that I had spent so much time thinking about on land and then was able to see them in, in person. Um, you know, and when you travel to go diving all over the world, um, as I've had the privilege to do, you know, the people that you meet, um, the experiences that you have, topside um, and underwater, can change you if you let it. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about traveling is that, um, it can, it can alter the way that you feel, the way you you interact with people, you, the, the way you believe the world should be. And those are all things that happen when you have an open heart and an open mind when you travel. And it's, um, I think that's one of the most magical parts of traveling is that you can bring a piece of a, of a place or a person home with you forever and it can be transformative. And um, making friends on land is easy for me, but making friends underwater is even easier. And I, again, know it sounds probably a little silly, but when you dive and you spend time underwater with marine life, um, you make a connection. And sometimes those connections you can't ever forget. And this moment with a sea turtle is just one of those many moments that um, I know I've had, and I'm sure many of you have had too, where you don't startle these animals, you just share space with them. And this green sea turtle was um, relaxed and um, didn't really mind too much that I was there. And it was again, a really uh, wonderful moment to share space and time uh, with these you know, ancient animals. These animals have been on our planet for millions of years, relatively unchanged. And I have fun when I'm underwater too. So this is, uh, I'm doing a little dance here because I saw a disco clam um, and that beautiful light comes from uh, the clam flashing um, and unfurling its um, tissues, which is really quite incredible. So when you're underwater, again, you never know what you're gonna see and that's what makes it so exciting. So one of the next places that I wanna take you with me um, to is Guadalupe, Mexico. This is an area that was discovered in the 70s um, by uh, recreational fishermen who were out there catching tuna and um, other large fish. And they started to recognize that great white sharks were out there and they were quite plentiful. Uh, and so uh, that started a whole uh, era of uh, people going out and looking for the great white sharks there and it sparked a whole industry and so now uh, because of uh, the tourism and the people going out to this area you can arrive in Guadalupe and uh, it's an 18 hour boat ride out um, in the middle of kind of nowhere <laughs> it's a big rock in the middle of nowhere and uh, once you arrive 
uh, cages are lowered into the water in which you'll go to observe the great whites in their natural habitat. And the cages are all set up and the cages, some of them go down about 30 feet in depth and then others are closer to the surface. And uh, when you wake up in the, the next day, you have your first dive. And this is what, uh, if you're lucky, this is what you'll see. Um, amazing close encounters with one of the most beautiful fish in the sea. Uh, great white sharks are an evolutionary marvel. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, while I was, well, the, one of the reasons I was invited um, to this trip was to try to uh, figure out how big the sharks are that are in Guadalupe. They know uh, individuals that come back repeatedly, but uh, they wanted to know how long these sharks are. So with students from Colorado, I developed um, a tool uh, it's called twin laser photogrammetry to be able to help measure these animals. And we have two lasers on the ends of um, uh, a PVC pipe and a camera in between. And those uh, lasers are calibrated to be parallel and set 50 centimeters apart. And you can shine those on the side of the shark as it swims by and then use the footage to calculate how big the shark is. So it's an easy, cheap, and non-invasive way to collect more data on these animals, which you would think we have so much information about, but we're still learning um, so much about great white sharks, even though it seems like we should know so much more about these animals. Um, while I was there, we saw all kinds of weird behaviors. This is uh, a great white shark um, posturing, uh, signaling, and we're not really sure what this means. Um, again, you know, we're still learning some of the most fundamental aspects about these animals, um, which you would believe we would have figured out. But again, there's so much about the ocean we still don't know. And that's what makes it so exciting. Um, one of the other things I got to do during that trip, um, which is one of my favorite trips of all time, was I had a team of amazingly talented people who know how to send a signal from the middle of nowhere um, from underwater to a satellite and then beam that into classrooms. And so I was able to do a lot of webinars from underwater from the beach. Exciting. So um, Guadalupe is definitely a mecca for uh, being able to see great white sharks in clear water. I've swam with great whites in South Africa and that was amazing. Um, however, I found the water quality in Guadalupe was much better and the visibility um, was well over 100 feet on every dive nearly that we had. So that is um, truly spectacular. Um, I also had another extraordinary moment in Mexico in a place called La Paz in Baja as well. Um, that's me right after um, diving and I'm with my, or snorkeling actually, with my son, um, Nicholas. And uh, we were able to go uh, and swim with juvenile whale sharks um, right in the seagrass beds in La Paz. And it was uh, a really profound experience uh, for me as a mother for my young son to have him experience something that amazing at a young age. Um, and to be able to share that, you know, incredible animals um, energy and to see that it is, you know, filter feeding right there in front of us. It didn't really care that we were there, honestly. It was in shallow seagrass. The, 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 the water was murky and a little bit cloudy with all of the plankton that was in the water. And that's why the shark was there. It was, um, filtering out those tiny uh, zooplankton and phytoplankton um, right there. And so imagine, you know, the biggest uh, sharks in the ocean are being built by, you know, nearly microscopic plants and animals. Um, it was really an extraordinary opportunity. One of the other places that I love to go diving, and, uh, and I'm sure if you've been uh, to this uh, region, uh, you, you know what I mean when I say the water is, is gin clear. Um, the water in the Bahamas is very special. It's very clear, it's warm, 
Um, it's almost everything you would want as a diver, I think. Um, and it has protected its shark populations for a long time. And so it's very sharky and that makes it really special. And one of the dives and one of the activities that we do often when we go to the Bahamas is we deploy what are called grubs. These are baited remote underwater video cameras um, with bait uh, on the end. And that's what this Caribbean reef shark is interested in. Um, this shark is coming in to, uh, to get that bait. And the reason we do these camera drops and we do repeated camera drops during the day and night on coral reefs and uh, out in seagrass and sandy areas is to get a snapshot of what animals are there and in what abundance. And so we do a lot of these drops and it's fascinating um, when we get the cameras back and we're going through the footage with students, it's really exciting because again, you never know uh, exactly what it is that you're gonna see. And uh, so it's really exciting uh, for us to deploy these and then get the cameras back and get that information. Uh, one of the other things um, that has really been a big part of my life and something I care very deeply about is sharing the science with young people and showing them a way um, to care for the ocean and to make a difference. And so the lasers that I showed you with the great white sharks are now used in our programs um, with students. And so we have middle and high school students who go diving overcome their fear of, you know, diving and sharks and go down and actually collect their own data and analyze their data and upload it to a database. So it's a really unique opportunity for kids at a young age to be exposed to that level of science. And it's something that uh, makes me really proud because I feel like that is opening up doors for students that maybe they otherwise would not have had the opportunity um, to, to be part of something like this. And it is really uh, amazing to see how students respond to it and what it means to them. And this is another funny, <laughs> this is a great dive. Uh, it's kind of a, not a very good video, but we were with a group of students and I was treasure hunting with them. And unbeknownst to me, there was a great hammerhead swimming above us and kind of at the last moment, we all looked up and saw this amazing great hammerhead shark swimming overhead um, and this was um, by the island of Eleuthera. And I thought to myself, my goodness, these are students that, you know, have been diving maybe six or seven times in their life. <laughs> and they're seeing this amazing great hammerhead on, on that dive. And oh my goodness, uh, the sunlight was coming down on the shark. Uh, and it was just one of those moments that, again, um, you, you never forget. It's always in your mind and in your heart. You'll never ever forget the, the feeling you had in that, that moment. Um, another place that is absolutely near and dear to my heart is Costa Rica. Costa Rica um, is a place that I've had the uh, fortune of being able to go and do research in for the last five years. And uh, I have uh, done a multitude of different projects um, in Costa Rica, uh, and it's an amazing country. It has amazing people, and the wildlife, uh, the marine wildlife is uh, abundant and diverse, and it's an incredible place to spend time underwater. And uh, this video is uh, of me and uh, one of my collaborators, Ernst Vanderpol, who runs Connect Ocean. We're down um, measuring bull sharks on a dive in a place called Isla Murcielago, or the Bat Islands. And here you can see this bull shark swimming right over the reef. It's about 130 feet or so where we are, and there's a really pronounced thermocline. And the water is almost blurry um, because of that, that thermocline. And the minute you go through the thermocline is when you start to see the sharks. And these are beautiful bull sharks. And what's uh, interesting is we don't know where these sharks are going. Um, their comings and goings are kind of unknown in this area. And so um, they're tagged with acoustic tags and listening stations are positioned in the area. And so we were trying to figure out where are they going? How big are these females and males that are present there? And uh, what's, and I'm sure many of you know, bull sharks are one of the only shark species, well, one of several shark species that can go into fresh water. And so during parts of the seasons, um, these animals 
will go into the rivers and they disappear. And so it's really a fascinating story to try to unravel and to try to understand where they're going and what's happening to them. Um, and it's an area that is a national park and they should be protected, but sometimes uh, longline fishermen come into that area. So it's a, an area of concern for sure. And you can see those bull sharks are, they're like footballs. They're very stocky um, and they, uh, they kind of command their own, they have a commanding presence, I should say. Um, and then another place uh, that has, has captured my heart for sure, and I've uh, gone uh, to, to this country several times, is Belize. Uh, Belize is a country that values its marine uh, diversity and um, is truly uh, exceptional diving. And the video I'm gonna share with you was, uh, well, I think last year I went uh, with a group of students and uh, we uh, were able to go diving um, in the blue hole um, which is 407 feet deep. I, we did not go <laughs> 407 feet deep. But what's interesting about the Blue Hole is it used to be a cave system um, many, many uh, uh, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. And so when you are diving, and I'm about 130, 140 feet here, you can see these stalactites coming down uh, from the cave, what once was a cave dripping down water, creating these huge uh, formations and then you swim through them. Um, and it's absolutely incredible um, to know that this was once a cave system so long ago. It just is a remarkable dive opportunity. And on that same trip, um, there's something very funny that happened. Um, as is the case, we deploy our baited cameras many times, and this is a nurse shark female who just decided to go and lay on her back and. Uh, just snack on this uh, this canister that we had deployed. So I just thought that was so funny that she just decided to lay on her back and it was a lot easier to do it that way than to try any other way. So that was uh, one of our funny moments on back on the boat, that's for sure. And then one of the other things um, that I think is incredible is that, you know, even when you're on the boat, there are things that happen that are absolutely magical and take your breath away and if I left the sound on this video, you would probably be laughing because there was a whole bunch of us on the bow of the boat and we were, we were very excited and, and we were yelling and hooting and getting really excited because there was a big pod of dolphin and there were small uh, little baby dolphins in amongst the adults. And um, it, was, it, was a, it was an incredible moment we shared with them and we went diving shortly thereafter and heard them underwater vocalizing. So it was uh, a very magical experience to be able to see these dolphin in the area and then go diving underwater and hear their calls and their vocalizations. It was just um, profound. And you know, so for me, uh, one of the, the privileges of being a diver and seeing so many incredible things is the opportunity to share that uh, with people. And that has really become the focal point of my life now is to share uh, the love of diving and the love of exploration and the critical need for science and conservation with the next generation because the next generation is so important and will be uh, the, the ones that go forward to make us uh, have a, a more biodiverse uh, ocean because of their conservation efforts and their value, the intrinsic value of the ocean. And um, so I, I am really focused on that through the Institute and my colleagues here at the Institute focus very, uh, very seriously on the next generation. And so taking them on trips with us and engaging with them in classrooms is really uh, important to us. And on days like today, on World Ocean Day, it's, uh, it's really, um, exciting to try to share our passion um, and get people excited uh, about what we try to do. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and uh, if anyone has questions, uh, that would be great. Wow. Well, I, I think I speak for everyone when I say that was amazing. Um, it's so <laughs> cool and so inspiring um, to see all of the incredible places that you've had the opportunity to explore and, and how that has impacted the work that you do and that Ocean First Institute as an organization does.
Um, and so I, I, many of us, I think, wish we could be out there diving right now, but we're happy we were able to go on a virtual dive with you. Um, and we definitely do have a couple of questions from folks. Um, one person is wondering, um, you know, since you're a marine biologist and you've had the opportunity to dive both for recreation and then also for research, um, looking at your career as a scientist, what would you say has been like the most challenging or the hardest part of your job? Um, you know, I think as a scientist, um, asking questions and uh, developing the tools to answer those questions in an environment that's very challenging to work in and to do it on animals that are challenging to find, um, let alone be able to access and work with, that's the hardest part of the job is, you know, access to the animals and, and to be able to create on your own. I'm not an engineer, but I've had to kind of create things that I never thought in robotics. And I've had to create light guides that allow me to shine light into sharks' eyes at certain you know, uh, wavelengths. I've had to create things I never thought I would create. And it's a challenge, but it's also really exciting because at the end of the day, when you do get to answer your question, um, it, you know you're the only person in the world that has, has done that and that you're the one that knows the answer or you think you, or you've answered enough to get more questions, which is usually what happens is you figure out, oh my gosh, we don't know anything. We have to go back to the drawing board. But it's, that's the exciting part about science and it definitely is challenging, but that's what I think makes it so um, exciting because when you do have a breakthrough, it's... Um, it's a career high. It's an, it's a, something again that, you know, you've done on your own with, with other people's help and it's uh, it's very meaningful. Wow. That's wonderful. And um, I guess kind of a follow-up question to that, which you've already touched on a little bit is what's your favorite part of the job? What's the best part of being a marine biologist and a scientist? You know, I love people so much and I love inspiring people. And, um, and I also think, uh, you know, so that excites me to get people excited um, and to share that. But being with the animals for me has always been why I've wanted to do what I do. I, I want to protect animals. I want to um, give them an opportunity to thrive. And um, I think in order to achieve that, I've learned that the science is a big part of it, but I've also learned that storytelling and sharing exciting exploration stories is equally as important to get people to engage and to learn and fall in love with these animals that are maybe not so lovable um, so that they can, can figure out that they do have um, a place in our world and that they should be valued for that. Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, and we have someone wondering what's kind of your next um, maybe research project or next place you're really hoping to dive and study. Well, I love the Bahamas and I love Florida uh, and I love Costa Rica. So I'm hoping to be able to kick off a research project that allows me to continue to go there um, to study sharks and to work on conservation initiatives. But I also love to bring young people with me because they are the future and I want to have students who are trained and have opportunities to be able to continue the work that I do and, uh, and, and to grow that work. So um, that's my hope is that we'll, we'll be able to increase our opportunities, go on research vessels, and uh, take a lot of folks with us to really expand the conservation projects we do. That's so exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> um, we yeah. have another person wondering, what's kind of your dream dive that you haven't done before? What's like on the bucket list is another place you got to go? Oh my goodness. I think... Um, you know, Indonesia um, is a place that I have been, but I haven't spent a lot of time there. And so I think for me to be able to go um, to places where um, not a lot of people have been, there is incredible uh, biodiversity. That for me is, uh, is a lure. And it's, it's not easy to get there. And um, it's a challenge, especially uh, in light of all of the travel restrictions we have. But I'm hoping someday um, to be able to go, you know, to Raja Ampat or to some of these areas where, you know, uh, they used to be uh, shark, um, you know, fisheries and now they're shark nurseries. Those are places that really revive people like me and give us hope and, and, uh, and, and more um, energy to really try to, to get more people engaged. Oh, that's fantastic. 
Um, well, we're going to wrap up here in just a minute, everyone, but we do have a, a last question, which I think is really cool, which is, what do you think is the best place to take um, or to start as a, a young diver, as a beginning diver? Where do you think is one of those good spots? I think Florida is a beautiful place because you have warm, clear water. Um, and I also think the Bahamas and the Caribbean, if you can make it there, is, is equally as amazing just because they have protected their resources the water is clear and warm, and the conditions are just supreme um, to be able to experience the wildlife. And I think um, it gives you a good place to then start to do more challenging diving. Like in Costa Rica, I've done diving with currents and low visibility, and um, it tests everything you have, every ounce of your wit and skill and um, decision making is put to the test when you're in really tough conditions uh, with other people. So um, I think getting a good foundation in really easy conditions is a really great way to start and then start going into some of these uh, amazing uh, environments. Absolutely. Well, to everyone who joined us today, both here in Zoom and on Facebook Live, thank you so much for spending your World Oceans Day morning with us. <laughs> um, we're so excited. And Dr. Mickey, thank you so much for everything you shared today um, and the inspiring conversation about not only the beautiful animals you've seen, but how diving can inspire people to help protect our ocean. Um, it was just wonderful. And I'll, I'll turn it over to you for the final word. Sure. Um, well, thanks, Ayla, uh, for, for being here today uh, and for working with the Institute. Your, um, your inspiration and uh, your positivity is just infectious. So thank you for all that you're doing. And um, I would just say um, students like Ayla, uh, who are young and ambitious, um, are the hope of the future for, for me. And um, I just, I hope so much that we get uh, people who care about uh, the ocean, understand what's happening out there and really take to heart some of the very simple things that we can do to be part of the solution. And I think diving is one really big way to fall in love with the ocean and to be part of it. It's the, it's the one open doorway where you can really be part of it in a very special and unique way. So if you're not a diver, I really encourage you to think about it. Um, it's a life-changing opportunity. It's uh, like being an astronaut, but you're an aquanaut and uh, it's, it's incredible. So happy World Oceans Day. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you all. Bye-bye.